back to Sunday School. This is week number three. We're studying Genesis and the creation account of what God did that created all this stuff around us, created us, and it's just been awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm just enjoying reading it myself again because every time I read it, man, the Lord just brings new things out in the scripture. So we left off in verse 20 of Genesis chapter 1, verse 20. I'm reading now the New King James Version. It says, then God said, remember God's creating, God's speaking. God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let the birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. Verse 21, so God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. <laughs> you notice the repetition here. Why does the Bible repeat itself? Why, why is it that God repeats himself and the Bible's repeating here according to its kind, according to its kind? We talked about this last few lessons, but you know, evolution teaches that things evolve. And one species can become another species and become another species and things begin to evolve and, and we're evolving still and who knows what we're going to become next. But uh, you came from this little single-celled organism and now, voila, you got fingers and toes <laughs> in organs and you can talk. Praise God. But no, that's not, that's not reality. God created birds as birds. God created the sea creatures, the fish of the seas, as fish of the sea. He didn't create a fish and then turn it into and say, well, you need a fish, you evolve into a bird now. Or, or bird, now you're going to evolve into a human. No, he created them according to their kind, just like they are. Just like you see them today. <laughs> you see a bird today. We're very familiar with birds, aren't we? We're very familiar with fish. I like to eat fish. Many of you do too. We're very familiar with, with the sea and what's out in the sea and that's how it abounds I mean, if you, if you watch any underwater photography or if you've gone snorkeling or something in some areas where you could see under, under, the, under the waters, I mean, the, the, the sea is abound in life. There's life everywhere. It's amazing what's in the sea and all the fish in the sea and the variety of fish in the sea. The, the variety that we see is amazing. The variety of birds that God created is amazing. God is a very creative God. He's not bland. He's very creative. I mean, just think about a zebra. <laughs> I got to think that God, you know, he's making all these, he's creating all these animals and then he's like, I'm going to make a zebra. I'm going to give him a mohawk and stripes. <laughs> and if you look at a zebra, that's what they got. They have a mohawk and then they have stripes and they're just the funniest looking things around. It looks like a horse, but it's not. It's a zebra and, and only God, right? I think I think God does things like that just to just say, hey, you know, he's got a sense of humor, right? You can enjoy looking at a zebra. Yeah, you can look at a, a horse, they're beautiful, but check this out. <laughs> he's got a little pizzazz to him, right? We're, we're looking at his nature and character and who he really is. People think God is just so stoic and he's just so holy, and he is, and he's holy, and he is all powerful, but, you know, God has a sense of humor too. God's real. He has personality. You can get to know him. All right, let's get back to verse 21. God created all the winged creatures. He created the, sea, uh, the fish of the sea. And he said it was good. But look at verse 22. And God blessed them, saying. So how did God bless them? By speaking. By speaking words. God blessed them, and he spoke words over the fish of the sea, and the birds of the air. Well, let's think about this for a minute, shall we? God spoke words. to He spoke to the fish. He spoke to the birds. Which begs the question, can the animals hear the voice of God? What do you think? Can animals hear the voice of God? Can they hear and understand and comprehend God's voice? Well, God blessed them and he spoke to them. Now, 
We're not going to veer off from here, but we could go to, go to a lot of other scriptures. I'll just give you a few. You can go look them up yourself. But there was a time when Elijah, the prophet, was fed by the ravens, and God spoke to the ravens, a bird, and told them to bring Elijah food, and, he, and they did. Remember the, the miracle where the fishermen were out in the boat, and, and Jesus said, cast your net to the other side. That happened a couple different times. And these fishermen threw their nets, and, and God caused all of the fish in that area to get into their net, jump into my net. Fishermen, wouldn't you like that? Maybe you need to say that when you go fishing next time. Fish, you jump on my hook, or you jump in my net. But God spoke to them, and they responded. Animals respond to the voice of God. Now, we don't know how, how they understand his voice or, or anything like that. We don't know all the details of that. But what we do know is God can speak to animals and they respond. Well, think about this for a minute. People have always wondered how birds migrate. You know, some birds, man, they'll fly thousands of miles and birds can migrate. And how do they know when to go? <laughs> Where to go? You know, think about it, you're a bird little bitty bird you know these small they're not that even the big ones are not that big and they're flying along and they're going thousands of miles how do they know where to stop how do they know where to go well it's instinctive it's instinctive right it's just in them they know they just know right so something in them just knows what to do if there's something in them that where they just know what to do god put it there <laughs> any 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 programmed them that way or perhaps god speaks to them and says time to go I don't know if that's what he does or not, but we know that animals can hear his voice. We know that God, actually one time in, in the Old Testament, God spoke through a donkey. A donkey. A donkey speaking and talking to a man. Over and over and over we see this in Scripture. So I think it's so interesting. God blessed them. And this is what he told them. Be fruitful and multiply Fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. You know, God's plan is always multiplication. Multiple. Be fruitful and multiply. He didn't say be diseased and die. Be fruitful and multiply, he said. Look at verse 23. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. So then the fifth day, he created the fish of the sea, the birds of the air. And not only did he create them, he blessed them. And he told them, and this blessing was a blessing to, to be fruitful, to, to thrive, you could say, and multiply on the earth. Well, I, I would say from the beginning here, when God said this, that it's still happening, <laughs> wouldn't you? They're still multiplying on the earth. They're, the birds are still multiplying. We still have birds today. Yes, they don't live forever. They, they die because of sin, but, and the fish the same way, but they multiply. And they're still multiplying on the earth today. It goes all the way back to right here. Matter of fact, you, you could say that this was a create this was creative that God put in them the ability to be fruitful and multiply. Verse 24. Then God said, spoke again, let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind. There it is again, according to its kind. Let the earth bring forth. It's all here. It's all here on the earth. God provided everything that we need on the earth. The earth bring forth now the living creatures. Notice what it says. The cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth. Each according to its kind. And it was so. So God created the land animals. He created the fish. He created the birds. And notice how there's a distinction between all of these. Well, we know in classifications, and you studied in science, the part they actually get pretty good is there's classifications. There's different species, and there's different kinds of, there's mammals, remember, and there's, there's fish, and there's, there's, there's different types of animals. And, well, here it is right here. God's the one that did it. And he created the, the land animals and the cattle, the creeping thing, the beast of the earth. I'm not talking about your brother or your sister. <laughs> Each according to to its kind. And it was so. It happened. Verse 25. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. A lot of re repetition there, but again, 
Don't you know God knew there would be this evolutionary theory that says everything evolves. You were once a cow. You're 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 once that that little single celled organism. No, everything was created, and it was created the way it is. You know, you could go all the way through the animal kingdom and see that creation is real and that God created animals the way they are. I'll use this example with a giraffe. When you study a giraffe, giraffe is a very interesting animal because, you know, they have the really long necks, really tall, and they have these really long necks. And to get blood up into their brain, uh, you got to have a pretty powerful heart to pump blood that far up, that long neck to get blood up to your brain because you don't have blood in your brain. Guess what happens? So you, you've experienced this maybe perhaps you stand up too fast and you pass out or something or you get lightheaded. Why? Because the blood's shooting up to your brain, right? And if you don't have, if you stand up too fast or something like that happens, and you, you, you'll pass out. Well, a giraffe has a very, very big heart that pumps lots of blood very quickly because it was designed that way. And, and if it didn't have that, you know, if a giraffe was sitting down, then a giraffe were to stand up and pass out, the lions would eat him, no more giraffes. But, you know, God created that heart in the giraffe to pump that blood all the way up there. The interesting part is a giraffe, when he, when he moves his head down like this, what's going to happen? That blood pumping up there would, ex would explode his head, explode his brain. Too powerful now because it's not going up against gravity. Now he's lowered his head. So now his head's going to explode. His brain's going to explode. He's going to die? No. God created the giraffe, just the way they are. And there's a valve in there that regulates the blood flow. So when a giraffe lowers his head, that valve regulates the blood flow so he doesn't explode his brain. And then when he, as, as he raises his head back up, it opens back up and now he doesn't pass out. Let me ask you a question. How could that ever have evolved? How could that ever have evolved? It, uh, evolution teaches us that things get better over time and and, and things evolve and organs evolve and, and different characteristics of us weren't there. Now they've evolved. Well, if a giraffe is evolving, a giraffe wouldn't be here because without all of these things in place, all of these systems working together, a giraffe can't exist. And you know, it's that way with everything. It's that way with you. You can't exist without kidneys. How would you, how would you exist without a digestive system? Well, it hadn't evolved yet. Well, you don't exist. Think of, it's just ludicrous to think that things can exist in a partial state. And that's what evolution teaches. Well, it just it evolved that long neck. And it evolved, and as it evolved that over billions of years, that then then this this come on. We're it's just such a stretch to believe that. It, and, and the Bible tells us that God created the animals just the way they are. Just the way they are today. And we could go on and on and on about all the different animals. The bombardier beetle is an insect. Very interesting insect. I like studying the bombardier eagle. You know your pastor liked to study these things. I grew up watching Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Some of y'all did too. And you see the animals. I love those shows, nature shows and shows about insects and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm a guy. I like that stuff. Anyway, the bombardier beetle has, a very, is, is, has this interesting uh, defense mechanism. And so if a predator tries to eat this beetle, it'll shoot out literally like, like a flame, <laughs> like an explosion will come out of him. It's like all the bombardier beetle, like smoke comes out of him, like, like, like these, it's like it's uh, gunpowder going off or something. And that's just a defense mechanism. Well, inside the bombardier beetle, there's, there's three chambers. There's two chambers that have two liquids in them. And these liquids by themselves are not toxic. They don't explode or anything else like that. They're in two little chambers like this. And then it has a third chamber down here, right where it, where the where the fluids exit. And when he wants to emit this fluid and, and defend himself, the liquid from these two chambers meet in this third chamber. And at that same moment that they touch, there's an ignition. It ignites. These two liquids existing together ignite, and it shoots out. It shoots out of him through a hole he's got. It shoots right out of him, and then that's where the explosion comes out. Well, let's ask ourselves a question. How could a bombardier beetle ever evolve? <laughs> I mean, he's got these liquids in him, and then these, these liquids mix. He's going to blow up. <laughs> you have to have the entire system in place to have life.
You can't have life with partial systems. We wouldn't have any of the animals or, or even us today if we didn't have the whole system created at one time. That is what God did in creation. You were created. Animals were created. Bugs were created just the way they are. Now, in that creation, of course, God has given us the ability to adapt. And that's where Darwin got off. Darwin saw that birds could adapt. Animals can adapt. Well, just because you can adapt, just because you can adapt to different climates and different areas of the world, you know, we can do the same thing. We can live in, in uh, Alaska where it's cold, or we can live in Florida where it's warm. I prefer Florida. But we can adapt, right? We can, we can survive there. Animals are the same way. And just because we can survive in a different climate or we can adapt to a different environment doesn't make us a different species. Doesn't make, us, doesn't make a bird now a, a cow. <laughs> it's simply adapting. So let's get back into this. All right, so where did we leave off? I lost my track. I got so excited, I lost my track. Train of thought. Okay, I think we're in verse 26. God saw, he created all the cattle according to its kind, everything that creeps upon the earth, everything you see on this earth God created, and God saw that it was good. Now, before we get into this next verse, a question that will probably come up is, what about the dinosaurs, Pastor? Everybody wants to know about the dinosaurs. What about the dinosaurs? Well, the Bible says that God created everything. Well, what about the dinosaurs? Because the dinosaurs lived 65 million years ago, and how come there's no dinosaurs today? And all these questions come up about dinosaurs, and people point to dinosaurs, and we know dinosaurs existed. There's no question. And we know there, you know, the dinosaurs, I don't, I don't see a Tyrannosaurus Rex or anything running around today. So what's the deal? Doesn't di- just the fact that there's dinosaur fossils and bones prove evolution is true? Absolutely not. When were dinosaurs created? When everything else that creeps upon the earth was created? That's when they were created. God created the dinosaurs. Well, think about it. A dinosaur is just a reptile, just a, like a lizard, just a big one. Everything was bigger in these days because of the firmament and the atmospheric pressure of the earth was different. But the dinosaurs were created in this creation account. You, Pastor, that means that people were on this earth with dinosaurs. Well, yeah, of course they were. <laughs> of course they were. Well, weren't they eating people? No. There was no death and destruction. There was, no, uh, there was none of that until sin came upon the earth. But God created the dinosaurs. Well, where's the proof of that? Well, there's actually a lot of evidence of that. I don't have time to get into it today in our Sunday school class. But there's a lot of evidence that man walked the earth with dinosaurs. There's footprints in the same layer of, of fossilized rock that you'll see in, in some dinosaurs walking and some human footprints walking. And There are carvings in old Mayan temples of dinosaurs. If you go into some caves that were that were uh, people you would would stay in and live in thousands of years ago there are they would draw on the on the walls of the caves and guess what they drew animals horses cows dinosaurs <laughs> well let's ask ourselves a question how could someone who lived in a cave 4000 years ago know what a dinosaur looks like we know cuz we watched Jurassic Park <laughs> We can excavate these things. We have technology. We can recreate them and put them all back together and know what, a, what, know what they look like, but they didn't have that technology 4,000 years ago. They had no technology. All the, but they saw one. How could you create uh, any kind of, of, of a carving or anything that, that's a dinosaur if you've never seen one? And those are abounding. All you got to do, you can go Google it and look it up, and it's, it's all there. Go research that for yourself. But there are paintings of dinosaurs. There's carvings of dinosaurs all throughout human history. My question is, how would they know what one looked like if they've never seen one? So the dinosaurs existed. When man existed, God created them. Where did the dinosaurs go? Well, we know that you know they've that things changed at Noah's flood. We won't get into that today. But when Noah's flood happened, things changed on the earth dramatically. And perhaps the climate was much different. On the earth after Noah's flood, pretty sure it was after all that uh, water. And, you know, you can look at things like the lifespan of people. 
before the flood, after the flood. I encourage you to go do that. Go do your own study of the Bible. Go look at the lifespan of people because the Bible tells us how long these guys live. Go look at how long they live before the flood versus how long they live after the flood. Significantly. I mean, it dropped by hundreds and hundreds of years after the flood, which points to the environment being very different. The earth being the, the environment, the atmosphere, the, the atmospheric pressure, perhaps the oxygen levels. Who knows what all's different on the earth now today versus when it was then. So perhaps dinosaurs couldn't make it as well in this, in this new environment. We don't know. But we know that a lot of dinosaurs still exist today. Yeah, you heard me right. A lot of dinosaurs still exist today. We don't call them dinosaurs because they're here. But like alligators, sure looks like a dinosaur to me. Uh, well, it's not a dinosaur. It's an alligator. Well, I mean, if, you, if it wasn't alive today, you'd call it a dinosaur. <laughs> but we still have reptiles today. We still have these things today. Uh, they're not as large as they were back then. Some are pretty good size. But uh, they existed on the earth just like we they, animals existed on the earth today. So we got to renew our mind to what the Word of God says. God's Word is the truth, and the truth will set you free. We, we've got we've to get out of this evolutionary thinking and, and, and all the things that you were taught in school and you were taught that, you know, that, that creation, it's, that's religion, and this is true science over here. No, no, we existed with the dinosaurs. We existed with all the animals. But God created all of them first. So we get into the next verse in verse 27. And this work is really good. It says, so God created man in his own image and in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. I thought there was 90 something different genders. <laughs> okay. I'm poking fun. Male and female. Male and female. God created two genders, male and female. And so God created man in his own image and in his own likeness. It says he created them. You're made in the image and likeness of God. Wow. You are, man. It's just, again, this is one of those things that makes your mind go tilt. You're made in his image. You're made in his likeness. You, let me say it this way. You look like him. You look like your father, the creator. You look like him. You know, God has fingers and toes. God sits on the throne. Uh, you know, the, the, the description we have of God in the Bible certainly match our description, right? He's not some kind of octopus-looking creature up there. We look like him. We were made in his image and likeness. We look like him. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop it off right here this week, and then we'll pick it up here next week because it's too much good stuff. I can't cram it all in the next few minutes. So God created us in his image and his likeness. Be sure and join our group on our app. Make sure you jump into the Sunday School group where you can ask questions, post comments, and things like that. And if you have questions, we'll be sure to answer all those questions. We love you, and we'll see you next week.